My name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving. We are in the process of doing, uh, dealing with the notion of addition and subtraction of decimals. And today is our lesson number 11. We are on page number 10. Please turn to it. Page number 10. On the top of the page, you will see the sample problems 1 through 10. We did the first five, number 1 through 5 yesterday. We're going to pick up from problem number 6. The problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We're being asked to subtract 7.55 from 18. 7.55 from 18. See what we can do here. Here's our 18. Here is the 7.55. And as you can see, it, it's a little awkward. It's a little awkward because if you put a decimal here and try to put, put a zero there and try to work like that, it's going to be a little bit more awkward to deal with. Forget the decimal for the time being. Just ignore the decimal. Pretend it's 1800 minus 55. Uh, 1800 minus 755. Pretend is 1800 minus 755. We'll deal with the decimal at the very end. We'll deal with the decimal at the very end. So let's get going, shall we? We have to subtract 5 from the 0. We can't subtract 5, so 0 needs to go to the next. This guy tries to borrow, borrow, borrow 10 from it, from the 10 digit here, because now they are 10 digit. You see, we have removed the decimal. He goes to this guy and says, can I borrow 10 from you? You are a 10 digit. Why don't you give me one? He says, well, I can't give you any 10 digit. I'm a big fat 0 myself. He says, hold on, don't go away. I'm going to go to the guy next door. He's a 100 digit. Why don't I borrow 100 from him? I'll borrow 100 from him. I'll give you 10. I'll still keep 90 to myself. Sure, that's a good idea. So he goes to next door. He borrows 100. This becomes 7. And now he becomes 100. Because remember, this is a 10 digit. And he keeps gives a 10 to this guy. And he keeps a 9 to himself. So 0 becomes 9 now. And he gives a 10 to this guy. And 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 5 is going to be 4, 7, you see it used to be 8, 800, that's why it's called 1800, it was 800, but he gave 100 to this guy, remember? So now it's 700 minus 700 is just a 0, and this comes down by itself. That's it, we're done, that's your answer. Now we can take care of our, now we can take care of our decimal point, it's much easier now, the decimal was here, it was 18.00, 7.55, so the answer is 10.45. 10.45, that's all. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Number 7. Number 7 says, Number 7 says, 31.84 31.84 minus 2.84 2.430. So here we go. 31.84 minus 2.430. Now that zero there actually doesn't serve any purpose. It is, it's, it's, it's not going to do anything if you just ignore it. It's not going to do anything. Essentially, what they're asking us to do is, essentially, what they're asking us to do is to subtract 2.43 from 31.84. Let's do that, shall we? And this is going to be simple because this digits are bigger than the digits at the bottom. It's going to go faster. 4 minus 3 is 1. Four, 8 minus 4 is 4. Where we get here, so now we bring down the decimal point. When we get here, it gets a little tricky So he go, because we cannot subtract 2 from 1. So he goes to the next door and he borrows 10 from him. And the 30 becomes 20. The 10 comes and joins this guy and becomes 11. 11 minus 2 is 9. And then 2 minus a 0 is just 2. The answer is 29.41. 29.41. But I hope, I hope that had it been a real exam, I hope that had it been a real exam, you, you, you were able to see immediately that the answer, would, answer had to be something around 30, because it's simply 31 minus 2. 31 minus 2 is 29. That's what we have, 29. And 0.8 minus 0.4 is going to be around 0.4, right there. You see, 0.8 minus 0.4 is 0.4, right here. And 31 minus 2 is 29. So it's going to be 29.4, 29 which is exactly what we found here. 
You don't actually have to do it out in the real exam. You just have to be able to recognize the right answer. Or, be or better yet, you just simply have to be able to recognize the three of the wrong answers. Do you understand? You're looking for something around 29.4. This is the only one that comes around 29.4. This is the only one that will come close to 29.4 because the right. All the others are going to be far apart in the answer choices. They don't give you answers that close to each other. Do you understand? Number eight. Never put in, never put in any more work than what is absolutely necessary. That should be a model. Number eight. Twenty-one point three six minus eight point seven nine. Now again, before we do any work, before we do any work, let's get an approximation so that we. Had it been a real exam, we would simply say to ourselves that this is approximately 21 minus 9. 21 minus 10 would have been 11, so it's going to be around 12. It's going to be about 12. The correct answer, whatever it is, it's going to be around 12. Let's do it out. 21.36 minus 8.79. 8.79. So, things are going to get prickly. Let's first, let's first hold the 10 digit here so that we can see it here. There is nothing here. We can't subtract 9 from the 6, so 6 goes to this guy, borrows, borrows 1 from him, 3 becomes 2, and he be 6 becomes 16. 16 minus 10 would have been 6, therefore 16 minus 9 is going to be 7. Now we are left with 2 over here, we can't subtract 2 from, we can't subtract uh, 7 from the 2, so he goes to, to this guy, borrows a 1, and the 1 becomes 0, he gives the 1 to this guy, becomes 12, and 12 minus 7 is 5. Bring the decimal point down. We can't subtract 8 from the 0, so he goes to the next door, he borrows the 1, and 2 becomes 1, and the 1 joins here, becomes the 10, 10 minus 8 is 2, and this 1 simply comes down, and it's 12.57, which is exactly what we said, it's going to be around 12. As I keep repeating like a parrot, in the real exam, you don't actually have to do it out every, every single step, you understand? Number 9. Number nine, the penultimate, exam, uh, penultimate question, number nine, we are told that we have sick days, we have 1.25 sick days, I don't know what exactly that means, and 2.5 days of vacation. I again do not know how a person will take two and a half days for a vacation or how a person will get sick for it one and a quarter day, but I'm not in the real world, so I, I do not know. We are we 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 asked to find out what the total is. You can do it here like, like it is. It's, it's already set up. It's very simple, very straightforward. You can simply add them up. It's 0 0.5 plus 0 is just going to be 5. 2 plus, 7 is, 2 plus 5 is 7. And 1 plus 2 is 3. You can do that. We could have done that. Or we could have realized that 1.25 is 1 and a quarter. And 2 and a half. Two and a half is simply going to be one plus two is three, and a quarter and a half. Half is simply two quarters. Half, half is no more, no no different than two quarters. If you multiply top and bottom by two, if you have a half, that's same as two quarters because if you multiply top and bottom by two, we get two over four, which is two quarters, which makes perfect sense. Half is a two quarter. Obviously, two quarters make a half. Think if it if it makes it easier for you. If it, if it helps you, think in terms of money. If you have two quarters, that's half a dollar. Because four quarters make a dollar. Four quarters make one dollar. So, a quarter and a half is three quarters. And of course, three quarters is the same as 0.75. I'm making too much fuss about nothing. Let's do the last one, shall we? Let's do the last one. We are told that... Uh, the person has something I did not write down. She has pie, six and a quarter pie. Oh Jesus! Has six point two five pie. Six point two five pie. And has to give away three point seven five pie. Question is: Once she has done that, what is she left with? Well, again, it may, if it helps you, ignore the decimal point. If it helps you, ignore the decimal point. Just subtract 620. Just subtract 375 from 625, and now it is simpler. We'll deal with the decimal at the end. 
5 minus 5 is 0. We cannot subtract 7 from the 2, so we borrow 1 from this guy. 6 becomes 5, and this becomes 12. 12 minus 7 is 5, and then 5 minus 3 is going to be 2. And now we go and put in our decimal, right here. The answer is 2 and a half. Answer is 2 and a half. On the way, could have, on the way we could have solved this problem is to simply add them up. This, this is same as 6 and a quarter, or, or not add them, but rather subtract minus 3 and 3 quarters. 6 and a quarter minus 3 and 3 quarters. What? Let me rewrite it a little bit better. 6 and a quarter minus 3 and 3 quarters. If you keep listening, see what happens. The problem is, we cannot subtract 3 quarters from a quarter. Okay, pay attention. We cannot subtract 3 quarters from just a quarter. So we have to do something here. What we do is this. Take, take this, this, take this six, and, 6 and a quarter. 6 and a quarter. And let's write that as 5 plus 1 plus a quarter. Which makes sense. 5 plus 1 is 6. And 6 plus a quarter is 6 and a quarter. That one in turn can be written as, so this is 5, this one in turn can be written as 4 quarters. Of course it can be written as 4 quarters because 4 quarters make 1. So now we have 4 quarters and 1 quarter, that's 5 quarters. So 6 and 1 quarter can be written as 5 and 5 quarters. That's exactly what we need to do here. Let's write that as 5 and 5 quarters. 6 and a quarter can be written as 5 and 5 quarters. And now the rest is very simple. If you have five quarters and you take away three quarters, if you have five quarters and if you take away three quarters, you're left with two quarters. And if you have five and you take away three, you're left with two. There's the answer, two and two quarters. Well, two quarters is half, which is exactly what we have here. Two and two quarters is same as two and a half. Because two quarters make a half. Two and a half is exactly what we have said, 2.5. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we'll begin the concept of multiplying decimals, which sometimes can, can, can get tricky, but as long as uh, we keep track of our decimal point, as long as there, there's, a, there's a way to deal with it, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. But that's the topic we're going to start tomorrow. We'll do, deal with the problems uh, involving the multiplication of numbers having to do with decimals. Okay? Bye now.